I don't usually do sad stories, but what the heck, here's one that deserves to be told, especially if you're a German Shepherd named Bracken. Who's Bracken, you ask? Well, he was supposed to be a fairly consistent co-star with Lindsay Wagner during the third season of The Bionic Woman as Max, Jamie Summers' bionic canine companion. But I'm getting way ahead of myself here. Let me hammer on for just a moment to set some context. If you grew up in the 70s, then you know just how popular the TV shows The Six Million Dollar Man and The Bionic Woman were. Starring Lee Majors and Lindsay Wagner, these two shows started a bionic craze. Everyone my age that I knew wished that they could be somehow bionic. Never mind the traumatic accident that would have to occur to get us to a place where the government might consider rebuilding us. Anyway, many an elementary school recess was spent reenacting the adventures of these two heroes. And as time wore on, it just wasn't Steve Austin and Jamie Summers. No, there was also the bionic boy. His name was Andy Sheffield. Yep, Oscar Goldman had someone else that he needed to keep a watchful eye on as well. Vincent Van Patten, son of Dick, played the youthful hero that I thought was sure to get his own TV show, but never did. And then there was the best bionic hero of all. The one that we've come here to learn more about. Next Saturday on The Bionic Woman, meet the amazing bionic dog. He doesn't like you, does he? I'm not about to get near that bionic jaw. Rudy's afraid. Max is experiencing bionic rejection. I mean, he thinks this can happen to me. Lady, you, your dog's tearing your car apart. Oh. Call security. Meet me down at the Jeep right away. We've got to get that dog. I'm going to put him away. I have to do that autopsy. But well, what are you going to do when I start to reject? You're going to put me away, too. Maximilian, the bionic dog. Man, this guy was cool. He could do all sorts of neat things with his bionic limbs as well as his newly constructed jaw. It turns out that he was actually bionic long before Steve and Jamie were bionic. Max had been the first. And during those first two episodes of the third season of The Bionic Woman, there was some question about whether or not Max could go on because, you see, it appeared that he was rejecting his bionic components. As I mentioned near the start of this video, Bracken, pictured here, was the dog that was brought in to do Max's dramatic scenes. It was a role that any dog would die for. There would be multiple appearances throughout the season, always ready to come to the aid of the bionic woman should Max's services be needed. According to cast and crew, Bracken really was the ideal dog for the role. He could actually act. All of the actors, including Lindsay, enjoyed working alongside him because he was just that good. In fact, rumor has it that Bracken may have been Lindsay's favorite co-star. Which one made a better co-star, me or Max? I, uh, played the fifth. According to Herbie J. Pilato's book, The Bionic Book Reconstructed, it wasn't long before Bracken was out of the role, not because he did anything wrong, Instead, after those first two episodes of the third season, he was replaced by eight different dogs. Stunt dogs, to be exact. Why? Well, even though Bracken could act like nobody's business, he hadn't been trained to do the stunts that a bionic dog might be required to do. And apparently, there were some unfortunate politics that came into play involving the people who owned the stunt dogs. It would seem, feeling like they had the upper hand, they requested that the stunt dogs do the dramatic scenes as well. It really did seem like something of an ultimatum to the producers. You know, you can have us or Bracken, but you can't have both. So, Bracken was given his pink slip by the show. From what I can tell, everyone was really sad to see him go, and their dramatic scenes did indeed become more difficult to shoot, often requiring Wagner and others to act out a scene without the dog and then have editors insert his parts later on. Yep, it is a sad story, a super sad story if you're Bracken. And to make matters worse, despite hours of research, I can't find any details about what might have happened to him afterwards. Hopefully, he lived out his remaining years far away from the heartbreak of the Hollywood Hills. Maybe he got to chase butterflies in his final years on a farm or something awesome like that. Let's all cross our fingers and hope for the best. Of course, Max lives on. We can always go back and watch those episodes of The Bionic Woman again and again. 
And he's also made an appearance in the recent crossover comic book that combined the Bionic Woman with Wonder Woman. I've got to say, it is an absolute blast to read this limited comic book series, which uses the likenesses of Lindsay Wagner and Linda Carter throughout its pages. If you're interested in purchasing it, I'll post a link in the description field of this video. One more thing. A couple of years ago, Lee Majors and Lindsay Wagner were reunited in a delightful little romantic comedy on the Hallmark Channel called Eat, Play, Love. Definitely worth your time if you're interested in seeing if these two actors still have the chemistry that they demonstrated together oh so many years ago. Spoiler alert, they do. So that's it. One last pick. Here's Bracken acting up a storm again with our heroine, the bionic woman. Look at those eyes. How could they cut this lovable feller loose? I don't get it. Anyway, now it's your turn. Please share your memories in the comments section, and while you're at it, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Maybe share this video on Facebook or Twitter, and what the heck, why not subscribe to the channel? I talk about music, movies, and television, mostly from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.